Hello everyone, and welcome to Changeling Gaming. Today I'm going to be teaching you the characters for the Blood on the Clock Tower script, Trouble Brewing. This is not a video about how to play the game, Blood on the Clock Tower, or how to run the game. If you want to learn how to play the game, then check out our video for that here. And if you are taking on the role of storyteller to run one of these games, you can find our video teaching you how to run the game here. The game comes with script pages summarizing the following characters and roles, but in case yours have been lost or damaged, there is a link in the description to a simplified version you can print out. The Demon The Imp, the sole demon for this script, will be woken every night after the first and be given the opportunity to eliminate any player at the table, including players that are already eliminated and themselves. Targeting an already eliminated player will result in no death that evening, which might occasionally be desirable. An imp targeting itself will be eliminated, but a minion chosen by the storyteller will become the new demon, and will be informed of this decision once the imp goes back to sleep. The Minions Scarlet Woman She will automatically become the demon if there are five players left, including the demon, when the demon is executed by the town, or if the imp eliminates themselves. If there are fewer than five, then the Scarlet Woman's power cannot trigger. Note that travelers do not count when determining if there are five players left. The night the Scarlet Woman becomes the demon, she is woken by the storyteller and informed of her new status. Poisoner. Each night, the Poisoner chooses another player to be poisoned for the rest of this night and the next day. The storyteller has a token to mark which player has been poisoned, which they remove at the start of the next night. Spy. Each night, the spy gets to look at the grimoire for as long as they want. The spy can also register as themselves, or as a good player, or as a townsfolk, or as an outsider. The storyteller determines which characters and alignments the spy registers as whenever an ability calls for it. This still works in death. Baron. At the beginning of the game, two townsfolk are replaced with outsiders. The Townsfolk Washerwoman On the first night of the game, the Washerwoman learns that one of two players is a particular townsfolk. Before the first night, the storyteller chooses which two players to show, marking them in their book with their own tokens, and also which of their townsfolk tokens they're going to show. Librarian on the first night of the game, the Librarian learns that one of two players is a particular outsider. Before the first game, the Storyteller chooses which two players to show, marking them in their book with their own tokens, and also which of their outsider tokens they're going to show. Investigator On the first night of the game, the Investigator learns that one of two players is a particular minion. Before the first game, the Storyteller chooses which two players to show, marking them in their book with their own tokens, and also which of their minion tokens they're going to show. Chef. On the first night of the game, the chef learns how many pairs of evil players are sitting side by side. A pair is two players, but it is possible for one player to be a part of a pair on either side. Travelers present at the start of the game can count as evil players for the purposes of pairs. The storyteller shows the chef a number of fingers equal to the number of evil pairs, or a zero if there are no evil pairs. Empath. Each night, the empath is awoken and learns how many of their alive neighbors are evil. This ability skips over dead players, but not travelers. Note that since the demon acts before the empath, if they kill a neighbor of the empath in the night, then the empath will learn about their new neighbors. The storyteller shows a count of fingers to the empath when they wake up to pass along the information. Fortune Teller Each night, the fortune teller is awoken and chooses any two players, learning if either one of them is the demon from the storyteller with a nod or shake of the head, though not which player specifically. However, before the first night of the game, the storyteller chooses one other player that will register to the fortune teller as a demon, known as their red herring who must be a good player. Note that the fortune teller can choose dead players and themselves. Undertaker. Any night after the town executes a player, the Undertaker wakes and learns which character was just executed, which means they learn the drunk dies instead of whoever the drunk thinks they are. 
the storyteller uses the Die Tonight token to remind them which character token to show to the Undertaker when they are woken that night. Note that this only applies to executions, and players that die for any other reason are not revealed to the Undertaker. Monk. Every night after the first, the monk awakes and chooses a different player who is protected from demon attacks that night, meaning the demon cannot kill that player and no deaths occur if they are targeted. The storyteller places a safe token next to the target player to remind them of this protection. If the death is prevented, the storyteller simply informs the town that no one died the previous night. This protection lasts until dawn. Ravenkeeper. If the demon kills the Ravenkeeper, then that night the storyteller wakes the Ravenkeeper and gets them to choose a player, revealing the character token for that player to the Ravenkeeper. This can include dead players. Virgin. The first time the Virgin is nominated, if the nominator is a townsfolk, then they are executed immediately and the day ends. This means if a demon, minion, or outsider nominates the Virgin, there is no execution and no confirmation that the players are townsfolk. Since this only triggers the first time the Virgin is nominated, the storyteller has a reminder token that they place on the Virgin once they've been nominated this first time, even if nobody was executed as a result. Slayer. Once per game, the Slayer can attempt to kill the demon. They announce to the town that they'd like to use their ability, have an opportunity to discuss with the town, and then choose a player. If that player is the demon, then they die. Either way, after this, the storyteller places a reminder token that indicates the Slayer has no more ability. Soldier. The soldier cannot be killed by the demon if attacked during the night. This means that in the morning, the storyteller will announce that no one died that night, but not mention why. Mayor. If there are only three players alive, and if the town decides not to execute anybody, then the mayor's team wins. Those three players include travelers, who must therefore be exiled for this ability to function since travelers don't count for the demon's victory. Note that in this script, this means that the good team will always win. Until that point, the mayor has a tentative immunity, where the storyteller can choose to have a demon's attack ping off and target a different player of the storyteller's choice. The Outsiders. Buffler. Every night, the butler chooses another player to be their master. They may only choose to vote if their master has their hand up to vote, or has already had their vote counted. When the storyteller wakes the player up at night and they choose their master, the storyteller adds the master reminder token to that player's character token. Drunk. This character does not know they are the drunk, but they are, in fact, permanently drunk. This means they don't actually have any ability though the storyteller will treat them as if they do. The storyteller will replace the drunk character token with another townsfolk character in the bag during setup, and assign the drunk reminder token to any of the townsfolk characters before launching into the first night. Recluse. This character can register as any member of the evil team or as an evil character whenever the storyteller chooses. They do not gain any powers from doing this, and this power remains in effect even if the player is dead. Saint. If the saint dies by execution, their team loses. For this script, that will always be the good team that loses. The Travelers. Gunslinger. Every day after the first vote is held, the gunslinger is given the option to immediately kill any one of the players that voted. The gunslinger is responsible for speaking up to use this power. Note that a vote to exile is not the same as a vote for execution. Scapegoat. When a player whose alignment matches the scapegoats is executed, the storyteller can choose to execute the scapegoat instead. Bureaucrat. Each night, the bureaucrat chooses another player, and for the next day's voting, their vote will be counted for three instead of one every time they vote. This works for living characters and dead characters. To remind themselves of this effect, the storyteller adds the three votes reminder token to the chosen player in their grimoire when the bureaucrat chooses. This triple count is made allowed by the storyteller, so players will know who the bureaucrat chose. Thief. Each night, the thief chooses another player, and for the next day's voting, their vote will be subtracted from any vote they participate in. This works for living characters and dead characters. 
to remind themselves of this effect, the storyteller adds the negative vote reminder token to the chosen player in their grimoire when the thief chooses. This negative count is made allowed by the storyteller, so players will know who the thief chose. Beggar. The beggar cannot vote normally. Instead, they must spend vote tokens gifted to them by the dead. But the beggar is told of the alignment of a player who gives them their vote privately by the storyteller when the vote is handed over. The beggar can still nominate like a normal player, and if exiled or killed, they behave like a normal player with a single dead vote, losing any others they might have accumulated. The beggar also has a special protection. They cannot be made drunk or poisoned. Note, travelers are used for players that arrive late and that may not be able to stay for the full game, or if the player count is above 15. Good luck! There's a demon on the loose. Be sure to support your local game stores. For us, that is Board Game To Go, who offer over 2,000 games for rental in the Toronto area and many more for purchase. If you're curious about this game, check out the link in the description. If you have any questions about the game, feel free to pose them in the comments below. Or take a look to see if someone else has already answered it down there, and be sure to thank them if they have. If you want to learn more about what our ranking system means, check out this video here. And if you want to learn how to play more games, check out our playlist here. And subscribe to learn when new videos come out. And remember, keep changing, keep gaming, have fun.